I sing. From rags unto riches, from the weak to the strong, I'm not worthy to be here, but praise God I belong. Arms of Well, this time we're going we're gonna to hear a message from our former pastor. Good morning, Pastor David Allen Grubbs and uh, the people at Faith Baptist Church. We certainly uh, want to thank you and share a few thoughts today that we hope will encourage you as you celebrate the 40th anniversary there um, at Faith Baptist Church. You folks at Faith Baptist, you have reached another milestone in your service for the Lord. And when you think about 40 years, some of the members at Faith Baptist Church have, were there at the founding and they have served the Lord for 40 years. Isn't that a wonderful testimony to have, to serve the Lord for a good many years. You and Faith Baptist have set a good example as faithful servants of the Lord. You know, oftentimes when a pastor leaves and, and you have a change in the ministry, you know, people people just have a hard time just settling down and so forth. And oftentimes people are scattered and, and uh, they just don't hold on like they should and keep up the work. And uh, But you folks have, a, uh, the Lord has given you a good, faithful pastor and he loves you and uh, if you continue to follow him uh, listen there's no telling what God will uh, how God would use you and what he will do in and through you as you serve the Lord that faith Baptist Church uh, let me also uh, commend you for your diligence in serving the Lord that faith Baptist uh, you faith Baptist have had your focus on the right place on what God called you to do. Uh, Jesus said, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And you know, that's what you folks, you had your focus on the right thing. You love one another and you have uh, reached out to others with the gospel. And guess what? People are still being saved in Faith Baptist Church. Isn't that a wonderful testimony? <coughs> You Faith Baptist Church have followed the plan that the Lord has given us to get in and go to work and be faithful as stewards of the Lord. And then lastly, let me say this, I want to challenge you Faith Baptist Church to keep on keeping on for the Lord. <coughs> you Faith Baptist have, you've had many opportunities to do great things for the Lord. You have, uh, you know, the Lord has opened doors and you've gone through those doors and what a wonderful blessing it's been for you to have a, a part in the great work of the Lord. You and Faith Baptist have, um, should keep something in mind. The Lord is still using those who are open and will take the opportunities that he gives to them to serve the Lord. Don't ever take the opportunities that God gives as a light thing. They're part of the course that you and I have been given of the Lord. Paul uh, recognized this. He said, I fought a good fight, I finished my course, I've kept the faith. And you know, a lot of people can start out well in the service of the Lord, but uh, many of them don't finish well. Many times people get sidetracked 
many times they are defeated by the devil, many are overcome by the things of the world. But I commend you and uh, for the track record that you have and what your part in the work of the Lord there at Faith Baptist. And I want to encourage you to keep on keeping on. Uh, get behind your pastor and uh, and he's a good man and I hope you'll recognize that that uh, he's the man that God had to replace me and to pick up where we left off and to carry you further in the work of the Lord. It's a wonderful thing to be able to meet and enjoy and to reminisce about what God has done in our lives. Now, Mrs. Jones and I uh, send our prayers along with our greetings and uh, we still love you and I trust that you will continue to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And we'll praise the Lord for what you do in the years that lie ahead. Man, that was an absolute blessing, wasn't it, to hear from Dr. Richard Jones. And uh, boy, oh boy, when you think about <clears throat> his steadfastness and him uh, leading us for all these years. And friend, I want to encourage us, let's keep going. Let's keep going for the Lord. Amen. For those who are going to be staying in the sanctuary this morning, we're going to be in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter number three this morning. And again, I want to thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for uh, celebrating this great day. Uh, together. Uh, I'm, I'm so thankful for our young people who shared that, that song this morning about the blessings of God. And I tell you, God is so good, isn't he? Tell you, you, listen, as you think about your life today, just this far, since you woke up this morning, think about how good uh, God has been to you already. The Bible says this, the psalmist said this, he said, blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. And then he said, Salah. That, that word salah there, it means to take a break and to, to breathe and to think about what you just sang about. Amen. And it, it, what a blessing it is to know that every single day God loadeth us down with blessings. With blessings. As we celebrate today, listen, we ought to celebrate God who has gotten us to where we are today. Forty years. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, it's amazing that we can be involved, as I mentioned earlier, uh, to have a, a part in the service of God. That ought to be humbling to us as we think about what he's done in our lives. I'm looking out today and I'm seeing uh, some familiar faces, listen, that, that don't attend here. But listen, you've come home to, to be here with us. And God's good, isn't he? It's humbling to think about how good he is. This morning, we'll read just for the sake of time this morning. We're just going to read a, a couple verses here. And then I pray that uh, we can have a thought that would encourage us today uh, individually, uh, but also as a church this morning. So let's break in here. Philippians chapter number 3, uh, verse number 10. Uh, the Word of God says that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained. Either we're already perfect, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore... As many as be perfect, be thus minded. If any be anything, ye be otherwise minded. God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. This morning, I'd like to bring just a short thought entitled this, Forward for Christ. Forward for Christ. Let's pray together. Father, Lord, again, we want to thank you and praise you for what you've done here at Faith Baptist Church over the past 40 years. Father, individually this morning, we are thankful what, you, what you've done in each one of our lives 
And Father, you've blessed us beyond measure. And Father, we want to thank you for that. And Father, as we've just read, the Apostle Paul, inspired by you, this is your word to us today. Uh, Father, he had a desire to go forward and to keep serving. And Father, I pray that every person sitting in here this morning has a desire to go forward for you, to keep serving you. Father, whether they're a member here at this church or a member at a, a visiting church, Father, we pray that individually today we would have a desire to go forward. Uh, Lord, if there's one here this morning that's lost, uh, Father, that's never truly received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, Father, I pray today the Holy Spirit would convict their heart and they would see their need, realizing Father, we're not guaranteed another breath. We're not guaranteed another service. We're not guaranteed another day. And Father, by faith, they would receive the free gift of salvation today, believing the gospel message that Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried. And Father, you rose him again. Father, I pray today that they would believe the gospel message and get saved. For the Christian who's here today, Father, I pray we would be challenged to continue on and to keep serving you. Lord, we sure love you and thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we humbly pray. Amen. Several years ago, there was a group of individuals who gathered together, began gathering together and worshiping the Lord. Uh, they would meet, they would sing hymns, they would hear the preaching of God's word. And soon, folks began to visit this little group. And in time, folks began to get saved. There was baptisms that happened and before long, you know, the little place that they were meeting at, they outgrew. And they had to build a, a new building. And they did just that. They, they built a, a new building. And the Lord kept blessing and the folks kept being faithful. And you know what happened? Several years later, they outgrew that building. And had to build another building. Can you believe that? God still blessing. And then 40 years ago, of course, the, the group I'm talking about is the group who's sitting in here this morning. God's still blessing. Church is still growing. The church is still going forward for Jesus Christ. But friend, it, it takes dedication. Sometimes it takes sacrifice. I've been told stories. I grew up here in this church and what a blessing it is to grow up here. And I've heard times of sacrifice, times of hard times that individuals have had to go through for the cause of Christ Next generation, listen, there's going to be times that we may have to sacrifice. We may have to go through some difficult times for the cause of Christ. And I pray that you'll be on board. Amen. And that we can move forward for Jesus Christ. Paul here is speaking in this letter to the Philippian church, to the Philippian believers. And he's telling them, listen, all these things I've done, I count it, he said, as done. He wanted to go forward. For Jesus Christ, I want to ask you this morning, would you go forward with me? Can we as a church, can we continue to go forward for Jesus Christ? Here's a thought this morning. The Lord desires that we go forward for him. I want to ask you this morning, here's your question. Am I willing to go forward? Now, I know instantly, we're, listen, we're Bible-believing Baptists, right? Independent, fundamental, hallelujah, heaven bound. And we instantly say, yes, preacher, I'm ready to go forward. Are you willing to make the sacrifices? Are you willing to offer your time, your talent, your treasures to go forward for Jesus Christ? We ought to. Listen, we're celebrating 40 years. You know why? Because there were folks who were willing to put up the sacrifices, to give of their time, to continue on for Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you today. Now let's keep going. Notice there's a few things we can notice out of this passage of Scripture. And I'll be brief. I know you're hungry this morning. Notice first, there's an active awareness in verse number 13. An active awareness. Notice Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Now, uh, previously in this chapter, Paul talks about, listen, he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was a Pharisee. He was all these things. But he said, listen, that didn't count for nothing. Save Jesus Christ. Here's what he said. He says, I have I count myself not to have apprehended. Paul, this great leader, this great preacher, this great missionary, this great man of God realized he had a, an active awareness that he was nothing without Jesus Christ. And he hadn't arrived. He hadn't made it to the place of perfection in his life. And friend, I'm just here to tell you that 
all of us need to come to this place. We need to have an active awareness of who we are, where we are, and what we're doing uh, for the Lord. He uses that word count. That word count, it means to reckon. It means to compute. Uh, it's, a, it's a balance sheet. It's a, it's a bookkeeping term. So in reality, Paul is saying, listen, I've added up my good, and I've added up the goodness of God, and I'll fall way, way short. I haven't apprehended. And friend, I'm here to tell you, 40 years, praise the Lord, but we haven't apprehended. We ought to keep going forward for Jesus Christ. He's worthy. He's worthy of us to keep going forward. Notice what he said in verse number 10. He says that I may know him. I want to ask you this morning, do you know him? Personally, do you know Jesus Christ? Friend, we can't go forward for him until we know him. Until we know him. Friend, you may be sitting in here this morning, you may have heard the gospel 150 times in your life. But if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't know him. A friend, the Bible says that in that day, there's going to be many, many, many that will say, I've done all these great and mighty things. You know what he's going to say? Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. I'm going to ask you this morning, do you know him? That's our jumping on spot. Listen, you have to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Here Paul says, Brethren, I count myself to have not apprehended, but this one thing I do. One thing I do. Paul was running his race. Saved, born again, running the race for Jesus Christ. It's been said, the greatest art is to limit and isolate oneself in concentration. I want to ask you this morning, you're sitting here in church on a Sunday morning, but where's your concentration? Is it on the Lord Jesus Christ? It ought to be as a Christian. We ought to be concentrated, fixated on Jesus Christ. Christian, we can get so busy. We can get so busy and burdened with life. How many of you are busy in life? They have hands all over the building this morning. You're busy. I'm busy. But friend, we must be concentrated on the finish line, concentrated on Jesus Christ. How can we do that? Survey the situation. Recognize this morning as we have active awareness, we need to survey the situation and realize, listen, I'm coming up short and you're coming up short and we need to keep on keeping on for Jesus Christ. Survey the situation. Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. What a promise from the Word of God. Listen, it's going to be times that we get weary and we get weak in serving God. But listen, uh, the Bible's clear that in due season we will reap. Praise the Lord for that truth. Not only do we survey the situation, but we be deliberate in our duty. I think about this morning as I look at folks and I see faces this morning. There's all sorts of jobs and tasks that take place here in this church to keep things going. And friends, we need to be deliberate in what God has called us to do. Be active in his work. Physically and, and spiritually. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 12 and verse 24, Only fear him, the Lord, and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider how great things he hath done for you. Wow. Forty years this church has been here. For Forty years. Think about all the blessings that God has done in our life. Wow. We ought to be busy for him. We ought to be active. We ought to run the race. We ought to have an active awareness. Notice secondly, we ought to have receded remembrance. That preacher has lost his mind this morning. He's, he's speaking in double negatives, receded remembrance. What is that supposed to mean? Notice for me what Paul said. He says, forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting those things which are behind. Paul now begins to lay out the one thing. And the first thing he says is, the, I need to forget. I need to forget. That word forget, it means to, to be no longer influenced are affected by. Now, what could Paul possibly be speaking about here? Well, he just said in the earlier verses that we didn't have time to read this morning, that listen, he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He had done all these things. He had been everywhere. Listen, he wasn't being affected by his sins. He wasn't being affected by his transgressions. He wasn't being affected by his failures in life, nor his accomplishments in life. There needs to become a time in our, in our life that we realize there are some things that need to recede 
in our remembrance. And we need to focus on Jesus Christ and have our minds and attention going towards him. I think about a runner running and he's looking towards the finish line. I read one commentator and he said it like this. He said it would be silly uh, for a, a chariot driver in that day to be turned around going backwards with the horses going one way. And I talk, thought about my dad. My dad's been helping Brother Randy and his family on the, on the farm over there. And I thought about my dad sitting there backwards trying to move those horses. It'd be terrible, wouldn't it, Brother Randy? It'd be going everywhere. But friend, oftentimes that's what we do as Christians. You know that. We keep looking to the past. Looking to the past. Now, I'm not saying that we forget the past. I'm not saying that on a day like today we don't honor the past. But friend, we can't live there. We've got to keep going forward for Jesus Christ. That's what Paul's saying. He's not saying that we, listen, we forget the great accomplishments. We forget the great pastor that used to be here. That's not what he's saying. He's saying we need to keep going forward. Keep reaching for what God has for us. We can't live in the past. We can't live in the past. Notice there's a few things. Well, even, even Jesus Christ said this in Luke 9, 62, when Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Friend, we need to look forward and serve God. We could look back at scarring sins. Boy, that'd be a shame, wouldn't it? We all have some scarring sins in our life, don't we? Can I say we need to put them in the rearview mirror? And just keep certain. Listen, we all have a past that's not so great. But we need to leave it in the past. And by the way, we don't need to look at somebody else's past and bring it up to their face either. That's a shame. That's a shame. The Bible says this, that be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Do you know today he's trying to get you down? He's trying to get you to remember those past sins. Listen, he's trying to get you to remember sins that you've already confessed. It's already under the blood. But he's trying to ruin you today. He's trying to ruin me. But Paul said we ought to forget some things. Forget those things. Put them in the past. Learn from them. Learn from them and then move on. Isaiah 43, 25 says, I even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. And in Hebrews 10, 17, and the sins of the iniquities will I remember no more. That's a question, isn't it? If the Lord doesn't remember our sins and iniquities, why do we fixate on them? Why do we get hung up in the past? Fractured failures. You ever failed at something? You ever, listen, Christian, have you ever went to give someone a tract or, you just, listen, you just want to be nice to them and, and share some good news with them about Jesus Christ and they slam the door in your face? Boy, you go away and you feel like, man, I'm such a failure, such a failure. You ever felt like that? But do you realize that in, in God's eyes, we, we've planted that seed? Listen, everyone else may look at us and say, listen, that was a failure. But in God's perspective, if we look at it from God's perspective, we've done exactly what he would want us to do. So friend, don't get hung up on your past failures. Listen, preachers, teachers, uh, those who teach a Sunday school class, and listen, they were look, looking at you like they were just bored out of their minds. Listen, you just keep on teaching. Keep on teaching. Amen. Those that you work with, listen, you've been telling them about Jesus Christ for the past 15 years, and they look at you like you're crazy. Keep on telling them about Jesus Christ. Keep planting those seeds. What about attention to accomplishments here? And we'll be brief here. But Paul, he didn't look back to his accomplishments. He didn't look back to the fact he'd preached in all these churches. He didn't look back to the fact that he had done all these things, written over half of the New Testament. No, no, no. He said he was still looking forward, reaching forward. The Bible says in Proverbs twenty two twenty eight, 28, Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Contextually, that's speaking about an actual landmark for land. Spiritually speaking, the application that we can see today, as we think about 40 years here as a church, there are some landmarks, praise God, that we should never remove. The doctrine of this church, we should never remove. We should never forget the doctrine that's been instilled here and praise the Lord for it. But friend, there are churches that get busted up because they have to change the carpet there are churches that get busted up because they have to change the paint. There's churches that get busted up because they change a picture on the wall. We can't live in the past. We've got to go forward for Jesus Christ. Keep serving 
him. There's some landmarks that we better not mess with. But friend, we can't live there. We can't live there. Let's keep serving him. Keep striving for him. Yesterday's victories were for yesterday. Yesterday's good reports were for yesterday. Yesterday's accomplishments were for yesterday. Did you know, Christian, today can be the good old days? Do you know that? What stops today from being the good old days? You and I. You and I. Not doing, not reaching, not going like God has commanded us to do. There's an act of awareness. We see to remember, it's very, very quickly, there's a relentless reach. Notice this, the third part of this verse. He says, <clears throat> forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before. That word reaching forth, it means to stretch forth. I don't know how many track runners are young people, if any of you run track or anything like that. But you see those runners reach forth for the finish line or reach forth for that baton. Friend, that's what we must be doing. We shouldn't be complacent. We shouldn't be uh, just molded in mediocrity. Listen, we should be serving the Lord and reaching forth for that next generation, reaching forth for our relationship with the Lord, reaching forth towards an ascending attitude. Boy, oh boy, we ought to be reaching forth with great growth. I think about a seedling. Uh, spring of the year, you see little seedlings pop up and those little babies come out of the ground and they start reaching for the sun, don't they? They want to go wherever the sun's at. Friend, that ought to be you and I. But we ought to be reaching for Jesus Christ, the S-O-N, and serving Him. We ought to have a sense of reaching in this right, stretching ourselves out for Him. There's a, a sense of awareness, remembrance, reach. Fourthly, there's a passionate pursuit. Notice verse 14. If you're in the habit of marking your Bible, would you mark this statement if it's not already marked? I press toward the mark. I press toward the mark. Friend, I want to ask you something this morning. Christian, we're sitting in here celebrating our 40th anniversary. Would you make a commitment in your life to press toward the mark? Have passionate Pursuit this morning. That word press, it means to pursue. It means to follow after. From the Greeks, this was a hunting term. Uh, it's a term that you would use to, to stalk prey, that word press. Think about Jonathan. I use Jonathan all the time. He's out away on a hunting trip this morning. So you have to tell him what I said. But we think about in hunting what we do. And listen, those, those hunters, they set out the cameras and they set out the corn and they do all these things to prepare to pursue the prey. There's work that is involved in Christian. I'm here to tell you today. There's some things that we need to have in line in our life so that we can press toward the mark. That word mark, it means this. <clears throat> it's a distant mark or goal. Friend, it's the finish line. The writer of Hebrews said this, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Where are your eyes this morning? church? Is it on the things of this world? Is it on the affairs of this world? Are we looking towards Jesus Christ? Friend, we ought to have him in focus today. Passionately pursuing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A.T. Robertson, he said this. He said, the goal continually moves forward as we press on, but yet never out of sight. Do you know that? He's always within focus. What happens is we take our eyes off the prize. We start looking at the affairs of life. We get complacent or we get mediocrity. We get all these things that will attack us and pull us away. But friends, we ought to be laser focused on Jesus Christ. We ought to have a purposed passion. The book of Colossians says, And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. We ought to be encouraged to endure. Pastor, what can encourage me today to keep on going? The blessed word of God that's sitting on your lap. Praise the Lord for the word of God. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. Do you know what's profitable for you today? To have the word of God, to, to live in the word of God, it will change our lives. 
so thankful for a church that's been based on the word of God. I've said this before. If this pastor, this preacher ever begins to pull away from the word of God, show me where the door is quickly and get you a man who will preach the word of God. That's what it's all about, friend. We ought to passionately pursue it, and we ought to be determined. Philippians 4.13, Paul has gone through some hardships in life, and here's what he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. You see a lot of sports athletes do that, and they, they re recite that, that verse, and praise God that they know a, a short portion of the Word of God. But boy, oh boy, he is here with us in every hardship of life, and he gives us strength. Friend, he can give us strength for the next 40 years. If we'll just trust in him and look to him. So we ought to pursue Jesus Christ. We do several other things in life. Hobbies, leisure, sports, vacations. But we ought to be focused on Jesus Christ. And lastly this morning. We see there's an awareness. There's a remembrance. There's a reach. There's a pursuit. But there's a calculated choice. Notice with me in verse 15. Let us therefore. As we need to be perfect. Be thus minded. If anything ye be otherwise minded. God shall reveal even this unto you. So Paul is saying, listen, if you're not in line, I pray that God will get your mind in line. I pray that God would show you the mindset that you ought to have. And then he says, nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Pastor, how are we going to keep going for 40 years? We need to walk by the same rule. We need to mind the same thing. Have Jesus Christ in focus and follow after him. Friend, I pray that we see a hundred more years here. I pray that we see, listen, until the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to call his bride home, I pray that Faith Baptist Church is still a church that preaches the gospel message. And friend, if we're going to do that, we're going to have to mind the same thing and follow the same rule. It's been said, Paul simply said here to having come this far, the thing that we do, we need to go in the same path which we've been traveling thus far. A needed lesson for Christians who are weary with the monotony of routine in religious life and work. Friend, let's keep going in the same path. Praise God for the monuments. Praise God uh, for the, 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 the truth, the foundation that we have. But let's keep going. Let's keep going for Jesus Christ. This morning, we're going to have a, Sister Rebecca, if you'll come and just play. We won't sing this morning. I want to challenge you with a thought, though. Here's what I want to challenge you with. I know I've went over. I owe you some time, okay? I'll give it back to you, I promise. But here's my thought this morning. <clears throat> if you're saved, first and foremost, you need to get saved today. Don't put it off. Don't put it off one more moment. Trust Jesus Christ. Recognize the fact you're a lost sinner. Amen. Recognize the fact that you need the Lord. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. You can't work your way to heaven. And friend, don't be too embarrassed. Listen, you may have made a profession before. But if the Lord has stirred in your heart this morning, trust Him today. Recognize the fact that you're lost. The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. But God, in His mercy and His grace, sent His Son, Jesus Christ, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but hath everlasting life. What a gift. What a gift. And he's given it just for you and just for me. And even though that we're sinners and dirty rotten sinners at that, there's a wage that must be met. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But God commendeth his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible goes further and says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, would you call on him today? Would you trust him today? Believe that he died on the cross, that he was buried, and friend, that he rose again and receive that gift today. Christian, you're here today. Praise God. We're going to have a short invitation. And here's my challenge. Would you come to an old-fashioned altar and thank God for the church that we're a part of? Or would you come to the old-fashioned altar and say, Lord, I want to go forward for you. Listen, we don't walk an aisle so others can see us. I understand that. 
But what if we as a church this morning show God that we're serious about going forward and keeping him in focus? Friend, you may not be able to make it to the altar, and I understand that. So you can pray right there at your seat. But if you're willing and you're able this morning, let's rally together. And let's pray for our church that the Lord would continue to bless us as he has blessed us for the past 40 years. Father, Lord, we love you. And we thank you. We'd like to thank you for joining us today on our live stream service. We pray that you are encouraged, that you are blessed, and that you are challenged by God's word. If we can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to reach us at our email below. We pray that you have a wonderful day and God bless.